I think 23 was an extremely busy year for us. We have done loads of activities. And when I'm looking back, I'm extremely satisfied and very proud of what we have achieved. We have a new branding, which shows a little bit the new, more modern uh, identity of Correlation. We develop a new website, which will be launched at the end of the year. We are developing at the moment a strategy for correlation European Harm Reduction Network until 2028. We already have main directions and these directions include the development of the and maintenance of the strong harm reduction movement in Europe, fostering civil society involvement in policy and community involvement in services, finding new allies in different areas, but on the other hand, strengthening the network and membership that we have at the moment. We focus also on promoting evidence policies and human uh, rights uh, based policies. This also includes decriminalization as the evidence informed approach to drug policy and to drug laws. The fifth strategic priority is focused on promoting person-centered approach in health and social services uh, to ensure continuity uh, and holistic care for people who use drugs. This year we had uh, five different volumes for the monitoring report. So we worked with the accessibility and availability of harm reduction services. Uh, we also looked into hepatitis C care for people who inject drugs. And we, for the first time, we looked into the mental health challenges of uh, harm reduction staff. We also then had uh, city reports, uh, five city reports. So we are looking more into working with advocacy and more with the local context of people. Uh, and we are also putting some effort into trying to make uh, the monitoring report and the data more accessible for data-driven uh, advocacy for our focal points. And also we are looking into um, new drug trends and for, for the first time we also made connection with the Teddy network. With Teddy we are providing the information and the knowledge about drugs, about drug trends. We, with Teddy we are monitoring the drug checking services and we know that in correlation, most of focal points, most of organizations don't have drug checking services, so we are trying to provide with this knowledge. Involvement of civil society is very important for a correlation network. We created a study with a focus group methodology in four countries, in Finland, in Greece, in Hungary, and in Ireland. In all of these countries, we assessed how meaningful civil society involvement is, and we published a report about the findings. In all countries, it was common that civil society uses mostly informal channels to communicate with the government, and it was also a common theme that uh, governments are always more satisfied with the process of involving civil society, while civil society was very critical in each, each of the countries. It is very concerning to see that uh, the involvement of civil society is declining in all countries we assessed. There is a phenomenon we call the shrinking space for civil society. That is that civil society organizations often, often feel scapegoated, stigmatized because of their uh, criti critical remarks on the government's drug policies. We have coordinated a European project through the Justice uh, Action Grant uh, on uh, vulnerable migrants who use drugs across Europe. A very important and urgent topic because we see more and more people with migration backgrounds in the streets across European cities. There is no real European or even a national response. And it's quite a complicated uh, issue with all the political tensions around the topic of migration and harm reduction and drug use. So we figured we want to know what the situation on the street is like for people with migration backgrounds who use drugs in different cities. We looked at Amsterdam, Athens, Berlin and Paris. Some of the things that we find is that access to harm reduction services, uh, services is really important for people. It's often the first place where people go and usually the only place where people are in contact with uh, nationals. A very important place in the front line where people can access uh, not only health services but also often legal services. Uh, definitely uh, something to advocate for is that harm reduction services should get more funding for all the extra tasks that they do. In 2023, uh, one of the main projects that Correlation European Harm Reduction Network was having was the European Network of Drug and Central Rooms. And then within this project, one of the things that we did it was to formalize the network 
It is a network that brings together organizations that they operate the drug consumption room or they are intending to plan the drug consumption room to offer mutual support, collect data, create advocacy. And then on the realm of advocacy, one of the things that we did was participating in the European symposiums on drug consumption rooms that took place with the Council of Europe in Strasbourg. Also, a lot of effort has been given into building capacity of organizations that wanted to open a drug consumption room. So building in the training manual that we developed last year, we have implemented two trainings this year, one in Slovenia for two organizations and another one in Berno in the Czech Republic. And we will create a new publication that will support the development of quality standards for drug consumption rooms. We are looking at developing a, a toolkit which will help NGOs to engage with prison administrations with the ultimate intention of developing health services in prison and specifically harm reduction. The fact finding we've done so far has indicated there are very few NGOs doing this kind of work in Europe. A lot of people who use drugs pass through the prisons anyway and so it would be a natural development you know, to help prison authorities to, whether formally or informally, accept the need for these kind of services. The Booth project is a European project in the field of harm reduction. We have three years to find out more what are the gaps in, uh, in harm reduction, where we, do we need extra efforts to improve the life of people who, uh, who use drugs. And we found many interesting things already, yeah? that services are very often not very nicely organized in terms of gender. They are very often male-oriented, female uh, drug users are underrepresented. Another important um, knowledge we found out is the regional differences. Many programs are organized um, at the national level in cities, but the rural areas are underrepresented. So all these kind of findings that we made in the first year will now be translated in the second and the third year into um, yeah, trainings, publications and advocacy efforts. So the European network of people who use drugs and correlation are key partners connecting the harm reduction movement with the drug user rights movement. Euro Input has a cross-cutting role across the Boost project, um, and particularly our job is to gather the voices of people who use drugs to inform the work of our professional partners, and also to, to document and demonstrate good practice being undertaken by community-led organizations in the European Union. We have been talking uh, about foresight research. The foresight research is an um, innovative way of uh, research which is currently being conducted in the drug field. Foresight research is something that gives researchers, policy makers, civil society a better insight and understanding of trends and developments that might shape the future. What is the ethos of uh, the Correlation European Harm Reduction Network? And as I see it, it is being informed by evidence. It is being informed by the lived experience of people who use drugs and working with empathy and understanding. It's great to work with a, with a new team who are all very dedicated and committed. We are looking forward to organise the European Harm Reduction Conference next year in Warsaw in December.